This is the stuff that you're gonna to wanna to know about these grid tie inverters before you buy one. So as mentioned, we use ours for wind turbines. Uh, those are Missouri Wind and Solar Freedom 2s, and they are 2,000 watt rated 48 volt turbines. And these turbines are Missouri Wind and Solar Freedom 2s. They're rated for 2,000 watts. They're both 48 volt turbines. One just has the better set of blades that spins in lower wind speeds than the set of black blades. Now today the wind is very calm. We had real high winds yesterday, um, but today is just a nice calm day. We'll get started right off of this. These are Sunny Boy inverters. They're the big name brand quality, like you're gonna pay for them. However, this is what I like about them. The input voltage, right, is 220 to 480 volts. In comparison, the Sun Grid Tie, the Chinese ones here, that's, they have a super small range. You know, 22 to 60 volts, which is, you know, literally, 38 volts, right? That's a 38 volt range. Or you can flip it over and go from 45 to 90. So that's a 45 volt range, right? It's bigger, but still small in comparison because these others have a far larger amount or ability to pull power from as far as a voltage range. That is my biggest complaint about these. Um, I, I, I want somebody now, Sunny Boy did make one called a Windy Boy, but the problem with it was you couldn't really program the wind curve. Whatever the wind curve was that they gave you, that's what you had, and you had to work with it. Well, that doesn't work necessarily well because what my Missouri Wind and Solar Freedom 2s need for a wind curve, which is right here, what I need for those versus what I need for, say, a Ista Breeze are not the same power curves. And to kind of lump everybody together and say, yep, this is gonna work for everybody, that just doesn't work. These probably produce more power than the Windy Boys because of the simple fact that you can change the power curve and make it to where it's working as best as it can in that range for your turbine. My next biggest complaint, which isn't the worst thing, but is very inconvenient. These batteries are wired up in 48 volt series. So we have two extras, but four of those are brand new batteries and we keep them in use. Occasionally we throw these others in if we wanna stay in a certain voltage range and we know we're gonna have the wind for it. However, what I complain about in this part is these. No matter what, if you're on the wind setting or like and you're in the wind menu, or if you have it set up for a solar menu or anything else, it doesn't matter what you have it set up for. Whatever the minimum voltage is in the setting that you're in, so if it's 22 to 60, it's gonna pull power from these batteries all the way until they're at 22 volts and then it'll finally cut off. If it's in the 45 to 90 range, they are gonna pull power until they're at 45 volts. And if you had it in the 60 to 110 range, it is gonna pull power until it gets to the 60 volts. Then it'll finally stop pulling power. It doesn't matter what you have the menu set for. I have them all zeroed out at 52 volts and lower on the wind side, especially when we're getting wind and I have these hooked up because I use them as a dump load. The batteries that I use as a dump load, it's important that they don't get below like if I have it in a 48 volt series like it is right now, it's important they don't get below 48 volts because that's pretty rough on them. I'm using these to absorb power and essentially add a dump load because I don't have that dump load capability on this one since it's a solar model. It doesn't have that. So in here is where we have all of our stuff set up. Now you can see all of ours are coming through. We're going through our own rectifiers. Of course, this is all set up for wind turbine stuff, even though these are solar inverters. Now, the solar inverters only have the two inputs, right? Red and black, that's it. You can see on there where the other ones would go if you had the wind turbine versions. Like I said, the wind turbine versions are kind of crappy and hard to deal with. This is far simpler and they're cheaper. Now, I don't leave the screens on because we don't use the screens other than making adjustments. That's the only thing we use them for. But you can see the only thing it's telling you right now, it's telling you, oops, it's telling you the watt or sorry the voltage at the uh, grid or for the input on the grid and then it's also telling you what you are or are not bringing in so like we're at zero volts because there's no wind these are emporia three sorry emporia view three um, energy monitor setup so basically each one of these on the power cord that gets plugged in right over there 
they both monitor each circuit and I'll show you some input from it. That way you can see what's going on. We have voltage meters right here too, or energy meters, I guess is what you could call them. Whenever we have windy days like yesterday where it's always, you know, it's just burning or not burning, it's, it's making power all day. It won't reset, but obviously as the winds get real low and then it, you know, it stops, these are going to get reset. However, the Emporia will not reset and we can go back and grab the data from it at a later date. Now what we do to keep ours from pushing through because this is the downside to these inverters. The, down the downside to these when you're using them for a turbine, if the turbines can push good power, especially in high winds, it's gonna push out of the range that these are working in. And there's no way to put these in series because if you do, yeah, this one's gonna grab from 22 to let's say the 60 volt and then the other one's set for 45 to 90 volts. Well, if one of them, if this one can't hold the one turbine back, then that one definitely can't hold them back. And I say that because if it couldn't hold it back at 22 to 60 volts, these turbines really start making big power once they get spinning fast enough to make over 50 volts, it picks up drastically. And one of these inverters is not gonna hold it and it's not gonna be able to react quick enough to the wind gusts and everything else. They're just, they're, they're probably better for solar than they are for wind turbines. But that's the biggest issue that I have with them is it's impossible to keep them in a range unless you have something like batteries or a dump load that's going to hold them in that range. On the solar side, you probably don't have to worry about that because don't hook up more solar panels than what you can handle or than what your battery bank can take and then also that take. That one's a lot easier to deal with than the wind turbine. The wind turbine is far harder. So yeah, would I use them for solar? Probably, but realistically, I don't trust them enough to run you know, 18,000 watts of solar through you know, say nine of these compared to using an actual inverter from say Sunny Boy or Missouri Wind and Solar, somebody that's reputable. Now, whether you have the solar version or the wind turbine version, don't waste your money on these. This is the Wi-Fi dongle that plugs in either here or here, whichever one you want to plug it into. We have one on both of them and I'll show you what it'll give you, but realistically the app is very clunky. It's not, it's not, there's no instructions that come with those things. You're, you gotta be your own IT professional to get them connected. It's just not worth it. It is far better to have that Emporia set up and I can also connect other things to the Emporia. So like I have the solar on there, I have both of these individually on there. And then to top it off, I can, in this barn, this is our livestock barn. So if I wanna know how much power I'm using all the time on, um, let's say heating water or something of that nature, I can have it monitor that as well. Now, I will also say that I have it set up to monitor not just this barn, but our house, the shop building. We have it on all of them because it's actually been a really useful tool. I'm saying that because reality, it was like $55 for one of those dongles. You can buy the Emporia View 3 that has far more data to it and far better app control and everything else for $89, I think it was, something like that. You know, that, granted that's just for one. Um, actually, I'm sorry, it was 160 something dollars, but it came with all these circuit um, deals. So I use some of them in here, I use some of them in the shop, some of them in the, in the house. We don't have them on all of them. Some, the other ones we just monitor the main power from the building. But moving on. Now the absolute worst thing about these things, they're not accurate. I say that because what the Emporia tells me that it's going into the grid versus what this tells me it's going into the grid versus what these tell me is going from the turbines into that inverter, there's gonna be some parasitic loss in the conversion. So these two, like this one is telling me, let's say I'm making a thousand watts right now from turbine one. Turbine one inverter is only making about 870 watts. That's, that's a pretty big parasitic loss and it's not, you know, ideal. What's worse is this might say it's making 870 watts. When I look on the Emporia, the Emporia is saying that it's only making 760-ish. So again, it's even worse than what it's showing me. Our net meter right here confirms even more that the numbers that are coming from that inverter box are wrong. The numbers that are coming from the inverter box are definitely wrong. The numbers that are coming from the Emporia and that net meter, 
they're really close. They're only, usually they're anywhere from maybe 10 to 15 watts off. And that's when they're in higher numbers. When they're, you know, at say making less than hundred watts, then it might be one or two watts off. It's, it's not far off at all. They're very close. Um, this, I, you know, again, I, I don't know how accurate it'd be because I can see what the voltage is coming in and the amperage is pulling in the wattage. What I can't see is, you know, the, I should have put one and I don't know how I would do it because these only work for DC, but it'd be nice if there was one that could come out of there in line with our, uh, you know, with our power cord and see what it's showing on that end. That would be, especially if they're the same brands, because that would give me a better idea of the parasitic loss, but I also wouldn't be able to data log that. So that part wouldn't be as helpful. And the last con, the batteries, right? We have these batteries set up in a 48 volt. They're all in series, right? There's four 12 volt batteries. They make 48 volts. They're all good batteries. They're new. These, no matter what you do. So if I set it to pull zero amps, let's say at 52 volts from 52 volts and below, it should pull zero amps, meaning that my batteries should never be below 52 volts, right? No, these will, it'll pull voltage all the way down to 45. Um, sorry, it'll pull amperage all the way down to 45 volts when it's on the 4590. If you have it on the 22 to 60 volt setup, then it'll pull it all the way down to 22 volts. I don't know why it does it. I can't figure it out. I've tried it on the solar version. I've tried it on the wind version. I've tried it on every variation that I can on here in the menus and I cannot get it to stop where I tell it to stop. I don't know why it does it. I don't know if it's, you know, just poor quality control on the capacitors and other components of the inverter, but it's that, that is my biggest issue with them because last night, for instance, our wind stopped at like, we had 50 plus mile an hour gust almost all day. And then our peak gusts were from 8 PM until about 2 AM. And they were in the fifties and like upper fifties, low sixties. The problem is I have to leave the batteries on because it'll push through these and then it'll kill these inverters and I have to replace the capacitors again. So I don't want to do that. It's far easier just to put it on the batteries and let it drain the batteries down. And then the next day that we have some good wind, I'll hook up the batteries and let it charge the batteries. And then once the batteries are charged, I'll disconnect them and then I'll just go back to the inverters. But it is super inconvenient. Overall, would I buy them again? Yeah, because they do function and they're the only thing I, that's on the market that will allow me to put a wind curve in it or do a solar variation. It, what I like about it is you can change anything on that because the Chinese inverter that it is, there's no regulations on them pretty much. So you can do whatever you want. Are they trustworthy? Kinda. We have not had one catch on fire yet. And we have put a lot of, I think I'm at somewhere around 50-ish kilowatts through each of those inverters, plus the other one in there that I had to replace a capacitor on because I killed it. So I have three of these things because I do intend to put more, not more, but I'm gonna start doing some comparisons with other wind turbines versus these Missouri wind and solar ones. Because what I'm seeing so far is those are probably the best ones you can get. But I wanna see, I wanna compare it. And it's easier to compare when they're both using the same inverters. So there's no variations other than literally the turbines. Like they're gonna have the same run of wire, everything. Everything's gonna be the exact same. That way the only thing that's being compared is literally the turbines. Um, but I, I'd trust them, sort of, but I also monitor them. Like I check them probably four or five times a day uh, on the app and stuff because I don't trust them in that capacity, if that makes sense. Um, I wouldn't go on vacation for a week and leave those alone. I'd definitely unplug them if I was going to be gone for more than a day.